sometimes it will be. Uh, that Fast forward it for me. She of taste and decency. And tonight he's curling up with a good book. Yeah, or as some, some, I can't even speak now. <laughs> some people thought back in the 1960s a very naughty book. Until 1959, the publisher of a book with a tendency to deprave and corrupt was liable to prosecution and even to imprisonment. So, what exactly was the problem with this book? It told in explicit detail of the scandalous affair between an aristocratic woman and her husband's gamekeeper, Mellors. It was written in 1928, but never published here for fear of prosecution. The sex in the book is quite visceral. Lawrence doesn't go in much for euphemism or any kind of romantic airbrushing because what he wanted to do was portray a romantic sexual relationship honestly, realistically, and in unflinching detail. And there was no precedent for that, really. In 1959, the new Obscene Publications Act meant that if a book could show it had significant literary merit, it could escape prosecution. So Penguin planned to publish the book in 1960. But the director of public prosecutions thought otherwise, as dramatized by the BBC programme, The Chatterley Affair. It commends, indeed it even sets out to commend, sensuality almost as a virtue. It encourages and indeed advocates coarseness and vulgarity of thought and language. Is it a book that you would even wish your wife or servants to read? The defense had to convince the jury that the style and language of the book as a whole was in the interests of science, literature, art or learning. George Donaldson is making a study of the trial and all the evidence that was submitted. The defense, they managed to marshal a whole array of the great and the good. They did. 35 people were called to give evidence. Who's this one from? This one is Ian Forster. The author of Passage to India. Indeed. Lady Chatterley's Lover is a literary work of importance. It's surprising that such a book should be prosecuted. And who's this one from? This one is from Graham Greene. It seems to me absurd that this book should ever have been classed as obscene. And I should say that its tendency, as Lawrence intended, is to treat the sexual side of a love affair in an adult fashion. In the early 1960s, society was changing. Ideas about sex and morality were being challenged, and the decision to prosecute Penguin started to feel a little out of touch with the times. The book obviously had been written 30 years earlier, um, and so sex outside of marriage, there was nothing new about that. It had been going on for as long as time, but it was socially taboo, and I think that by the time the trial came up, people were ready to shake off that taboo. The defence approached 300 people. They had 35 witnesses. Prosecution, who did they bring forward? They called no witnesses. Why they didn't bring anyone forward is one of the puzzles of the trial. No questions. It may be that they were overconfident and complacent and thought that they had won the case. But the prosecution was in for a nasty surprise. Not guilty. <laughs> The book was published on 10th November 1960, selling 200,000 copies on the first day and 2 million by the end of the year. The public couldn't get enough of it, and I was one of them. I bought my copy in December 1960, but it was confiscated by my headmaster, who said this wasn't a suitable book for a schoolboy of 12 to be reading. When I left school, he gave me back the book. Did it leave me corrupted and depraved? Of course not. But what impact did this case have on the wider world? I think the Lady Chatterley trial made a huge difference to the possibilities of life. The world before 1960 was much more inhibited than it became. And I think the Lady Chatterley trial freed sexuality and social relations in a way that was unimaginable before 1960. D.H. Lawrence said that with this book, he labored to make sex valid and special instead of shameful. Whatever we may think of Lady Chatterley's lover, there's no doubt that its trial in 1960 changed our attitudes to taste and decency forever. Well, Jarzy said there that your headmaster took it away from you. Do you reckon he read it? Uh, did he read it? Do you think he did? I, yeah? I expect he did, and he may well have enjoyed it. It's actually, I think, a wonderful book. Yeah. It is full of very overt sexual description. 
that has to be said. But dear Florence was not unused to controversy, because back in 1915, a book of his called The Rainbow was also threatened with being banned. And The Rainbow is now a book that is set for GCSE. They encourage 15-year-olds to read it. But once upon a time, both because of the sexual content and because of its attitude to the war during the Great War, 1914, 1918, it was banned. It's extraordinary what people will ban. Yeah. But what people, I think, really shocked about Lady Chatterley was the fact that it was this lady, this aristocrat, having a relationship with, well, the gamekeeper, with the servant. And even in today, you know what, we, we laugh about it, we laugh nature. about it, but curiously you don't often actually see relationships between, in our class conscious society, between aristocrats and gardeners, you know, yeah. not at least ones that end up with the altar. Mm. They may end up behind the potting shed, but that is a different <laughs> matter altogether. <laughs> <laughs> what people yeah, chose to ban is amazing. <laughs> you know, Alice in Wonderland was once banned by the Chinese in 1931. It didn't do. The Soviet Republic of China, Mao Zedong, didn't approve Alice in Wonderland because the animals spoke. That really wasn't very good. It sort of demeaned human beings. What people will ban is amazing. Wow, yeah. God, if you're grown expensive. up, you can read this book and enjoy it. Da Vinci Code? Da Vinci Code, that was banned in the Lebanon because people, well, there were the Christians in the Lebanon who felt that the depiction of Christ having a relationship with Mary Magdalene was considered sacrilegious. So different things offend different people at different times. Yeah. But some things don't offend anybody ever. Mm. Isn't that right? <laughs> <laughs> Such a charmer, isn't he? Uh, oh, Giles, well, you. Well, we decided. <laughs> we want to, I mean, it's not just cross class, but it's cross age as well. You know, it's <laughs> not, sometimes it can work. Age is just a number, darling. Age is just a number. Thank you for saying that. <laughs> he exactly. wishes. What do you ever think about marrying a top? I am a top, actually. I just put on that accent, the northern accent. Yeah. Um, yes, of course. And I come from Accrington. I just put on this accent. <laughs> That's why we get on so well, yes. So I'm the rough, she's back. the smooth. You never knew. <laughs> <laughs> Lovely. Well, there we are, then. I'm <laughs> pushing. It's been a wonderful little series so far. Honestly, it really has, Charles. Lovely. Anyway, on we go. Now, the tattoo industry is growing fast with one in